Good morning, everyone. I'd like to start by acknowledging that today we are on the traditional territory of the Stolo people. I'm Henry Braun. I'm the mayor of the city of Abbotsford. Late last night, we issued an urgent plea to anyone in the Sumas Prairie to leave immediately. 184 individuals who could not evacuate safely were supported by water and air rescue last night. Our team continues to evacuate individuals as needed. Uh, this uh, and this morning we're going to do some aerial assessments of the area uh, and, and that's ta currently taking place. The Barrowtown pump station is capable of pumping over a half a million gallons per minute. Yesterday I gave you a figure in cubic meters per second, but this figure of just over half a million is, uh, is uh, per minute for all four pumps running at full tilt, which is what they've been doing. Um, the surge in water that we're experiencing at the Barrowtown pump station is from the Nooksack River, uh, the overflow from wa and, and coming through from Washington State of, of the Nooksack flood. Our pumps were not designed for a specific capacity, or sorry, our pumps, it was designed for a specific capacity. While the situation remains critical at this time, the Barrowtown pump station is operating at its full capacity, but was never intended or designed to take on water from another country. I am in continuous contact with government leaders and appreciate their offers of for full support as we continue to address this emergency and in our recovery, which is to come. The safety of Abbotsford residents remains everyone's priority. And I wanna be very clear here, it was our decision not to activate the provincial alert ready uh, system for the whole city of 162,000 people at that time. As we were aware uh, of, the, uh, sorry, we wanted to contact the, the, the directly contacting the 300 people uh, who live in Sumas Prairie. And those 300 people all know that there's an emergency by just looking outside of their windows. So we didn't want to alarm the whole city uh, so I hope that clarifies because a lot of people have been asking about that. Through the night, many volunteers, staff contractors, staff and contractors, and our partner organizations were able to build a dam, <clears throat> a road first in to get to the, dam, uh, to, to the pump station, and then build a dam to protect the pump station and buy us some time. And that has happened. Thanks, uh, so and I wanna thank the volunteers who came out. I think there was roughly 300 people, retired firefighters, retired army personnel, contractors, volunteers, mostly I think from the missions, or uh, the Chilliwack side, but I'm sure that there was also farmers in that mix. I know some of them, I don't know all of them, but I wanna thank each and every one of you for doing what you did and coming to assist our staff uh, who came up with a plan that would buy us some more time. Uh, eventually, I will find out who you all were, and I will personally thank you. But for now, on behalf of the city of Abbotsford and its residents, thank you for coming and aiding us uh, through the night. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to, uh, to uh, Chief Lee. Thank Morning, everybody. Um, the mayor already spoke to the work at the Barrowtown pump station. I checked in with the crews there today. Um, it sounds like it's running as per normal. Um, huge effort overnight. Just the coordination to pull that off with support of EMBC staff, um, Chilliwack Public Works, uh, the contractors for Chilliwack Public Works. We had one of our assistant fire chiefs on that side of the incident all day yesterday, and he was working with Chilliwack, SAR and Chilliwack Fire to coordinate rescues on the, and evacuation of the, the east side of the Sumas Prairie. And um, it just shows what, how, um, it just goes to show how these partnerships in times of emergency really pay off. Um, we wouldn't be able to achieve what we achieved without the city of Chilliwac on the, on the east side of Sumas Prairie. So we're really grateful. Um, and on that side, I'll just talk quickly. Uh, the plan last night, and I can't confirm it yet this morning, they had approximately 100 rescues in their queue of folks they wanted to go get out um, with, you know, with various stages of flooding around their homes. But I don't have a number of how many they actually got out. On the, um, 
on the west side, my numbers are a lot more clear. So throughout the day yesterday and overnight, 180, approximately 184 people were rescued off the west side of the incident, and that was achieved over, overnight. We actually brought in additional helicopters when we realized the, the flooding was worsening in the, in the East Prairie area. So three helicopters worked overnight, and on the west side, it was 11 uh, rescue teams on boats worked, and I'm not sure of how many um, uh, teams were working for Chilliwack SAR, so apologies for them for not having those numbers. Um, as you know, there's a fairly major fire event going on along the freeway under the, the transmission power line. So those are 500,000 kilovolt lines. So it's obviously not an ideal place to be operating fire, um, doing fire operations. So Abbotsford fires on scene there with Abbey PD and BC Ambulance right now. So that fire is basically, it started in a, a rec, a, in a RV dealership and there's a number of RVs on fire. I just spoke to the incident commander before I popped downstairs. Um, they're being very mindful of the power lines. They're working with BC Hydro to make sure we protect all the responders because if you have enough smoke, the actual the transmission lines can go to ground through the smoke particulate. Um, so they're, they're managing that and they're protecting um, one major exposure on the west side of the incident, which is a propane filling station. Um, and that's, that's sort of um, their action plan in a nutshell. I think there's approximately 40 personnel there. They're able to access the site from a couple, couple different directions because water's starting to recede on the west side of the Sumas River. So we have a little bit more access than uh, we may have had this time yesterday. And that's all I have for you this morning. Good morning. I think uh, Chief Lee covered off most of the things. As, uh, as he said, uh, we were incredibly busy and active all morning uh, throughout the night, uh, evacuating people. As you heard, we had over 120 calls in the queue for people waiting to be evacuated. Many people were able to self-evacuate, which was outstanding, uh, and we're encouraging people, if it is safe to do so, please uh, leave the area. We will be updating maps of the area so people know some routes that they'd be able to access to get out, and we'll continue to support people. Uh, like I said, the support that we've got received uh, from every Everybody across uh, the Lower Mainland, the province has been absolutely outstanding. Um, as we said, we uh, made it to 40 properties last night, uh, 184 people uh, that we were able to get out of the area. Uh, this morning, uh, we will recommence those operations with uh, the boats and the Marine getting out there and, and supporting people. Uh, approximately uh, 200 properties, 300 residents that uh, we know that we still need uh, to, uh, or that we've been working uh, through to access. As the mayor said, in regards to the alert system, uh, that's on me as far as we are assessing it on a, on a moment by moment basis and using that tool as a tool that we need to utilize when we critically need it, i.e. when we see that we're, uh, the pumps uh, may be in jeopardy. But last night uh, we, were very, we were able to manage and we were able to ensure that the public knew what was occurring and we'll continue to assess that. And the province has been outstanding. We've been dealing with them throughout this and uh, we are prepared uh, very quickly to activate that alert system system if we need to. So uh, that's something that we're addressing. Just a reminder, the evacuation center, uh, the mayor and I attended there yesterday at the Tradex. Uh, I can't tell you how heartwarming it was just to see the amount of volunteers and support there supporting these families that have been displaced uh, by the floods. Uh, and, uh, you know, strength in community is our motto. And uh, we have truly seen that happening over these last 48 hours. Uh, we, I think we're all humbled by what we are seeing. If anyone is looking for uh, support uh, from the evacuation center, just a reminder, 604-864-5688. Uh, if you're looking to actually provide assistance, support, or, um, or you need help, that is a number you can contact. And uh, with that, I will turn it over to Mayor Brom. Yes, go ahead. My apologies. Um, for residents living uh, west of the incident that's, that's currently happening, on uh, just off the, the freeway there in sort of the Sumas area. Just ask that uh, if there's smoke in your neighborhood, keep windows and doors closed. I know it's a chilly morning, so it's almost an advantage for us, but just windows and doors closed, um, shut off your HVAC system. There's quite an amount of smoke that's pushing generally west from the incident and just ask that people um, just sh protect themselves from that toxic smoke that's coming off. It's, it's prob uh, just a rough guess, it's about 100 recreational vehicles that are on fire right now and uh, we just don't want folks being exposed to that. Thank you. I apologize for the interruption. Thank you, Chief uh, Lee. And there's uh, probably, I, I have never counted them, but I'm guessing there's four or 500 in total there. So, and they are tight, uh, par parked tightly. Uh, it's, a, it's a sales uh, yard. 
In any event, I, I do want to say one more thing before we open it up for questions, and that is that the weather is helping us. The Fraser River uh, in the last 24 hours has dropped two meters, so a little over six feet. It needs to drop another meter before we can open up the floodgates at Barrowtown, which will allow seven times more volume than those pumps, all four working full tilt. So if we can do that with a little bit of luck, um, if that happens in the next 24 hours, we will be able to relieve the pressure on Barrowtown pump station. So I just wanted the public to know that. Uh, it, the last elevation was at 4.36 for the, for the uh, elevation for the Fraser River and uh, the um, water level on Sumas on this side of the pumps is uh, a meter lower at roughly 3.4, 3.5 somewhere. Uh, that was, uh, uh, those numbers are as of uh, 30 minutes ago. So anyways, open up for questions. Yes. Uh, well, they're slightly higher this morning than they were yesterday, but we still have a meter. But the volunteers and the plan that our staff came up with, our engineering department, I want to give them kudos, uh, and, and the dam that was built to hold back or to increase that by probably another three to four feet. So, uh, so right now things are just holding steady since last night. The, the, it's gone up slightly, but not much. So we're still within that one meter. And uh, I'm just hoping that uh, we're not going to get rain. It's not forecast any real rain till Tuesday. So if that happens, the river drops. Unfortunately, it's a full moon tonight. The tides will be higher than they normally are. But I think for the moment, I feel much better today than I did last night. Well, I, I should clarify that. What I meant is the information. We don't know what's happening on the Nooksack. Their they're recording, uh, or not recording system, but their measurement gauges were offline for a while. So we, had, we were flying blind. We did not know where the crest was and the modeling going forward. Um, in a perfect world, we would have liked to have that data a lot quicker. The river, the Nooksack is still flowing across the, we're not out of this yet. The Nooksack is still flowing across our border, and uh, that water is pouring into Sumas uh, Prairie. And of course, the lake and the old lake 100 years ago is at the eastern, well, the eastern two thirds of Sumas Prairie. The breaches that we've had and the overtopping of our dikes, the Sumas Dike, which is a different dike, uh, has relieved the pressure from the west side of Sumas Prairie. And think of it like a, like a, a bit of a bowl. So when those breaches on the east end broke, it relieved the pressure and went to what was once the bottom of the old lake, which was about 10 feet lower than the rest of the prairie. That is why the water has, re has dropped in Huntington and along Su uh, all of the properties on the west side of Sumas Way. But once that lake is full and the snooksack keeps coming, there is nothing we can do. Those pumps cannot keep up with that water. So my prayer has been that the river will drop another meter or more, let us open up those floodgates, that will buy us some more time. But if we had another weather event like we just went through, we are in deep doo-doo. I will leave that to either the chief, uh, either chief, because uh, I try to stay out of the operations. I just want to stay at the 30,000 foot level. <laughs> no, for the most part, as Mayor Ron said, there were some, uh, you know, uh, farmers in, in that they were a, a bit concerned about their animals and rightfully so. But for the most part, everyone that we have uh, been in contact with has been very cooperative and we've had a lot of support. So you now, uh, by and far, our rescuers have been out there and just reporting that they're, they're getting a lot of cooperation and support. It, it's going to take some time uh, to get to everybody. We appreciate everyone's patience. You'll see a lot of activity, extra helicopters and boats throughout the day. Um, and like I said, just know that we're, we're getting to you. Uh, there's no imminent risk, but we need to get you out of that area as fast as we can. But that uh, you just, it may take a little bit of time for us to, to get to everyone. Yeah, 
Yeah, and I, if I can just maybe bring that up, we, you know, we actually had a call yesterday where, uh, you know, people were yelling at our officers again because they were told to stop kayaking. You have to understand this water is not safe. This is toxic water. This water has been leaching in from all the different areas. We don't have a full assessment yet of just, you know, how bad, but assume that this water is not something that you want your children in a kayak or you want to be you know swimming or wading in this water and we're seeing that so again i'm asking the public we appreciate that you want to you know see what's happening and, and things like that but we need you to stay away we need you to allow the workers the rescuers to be out there doing what they need to do and it is not safe for your family this, if we lose a, a levy or anything like that you know the water can rush very quickly so again we're asking people that the pictures of people in kayaks uh, is completely inappropriate it's unsafe and you're putting you and your family at risk when you're doing things like that yeah and again the same message please please be respectful of what we're trying to do we it's all hands on deck I mean, the mayor and I were out on highway number one yesterday we were watching uh, you know cattle farmers trying to remove their cattle it was, it was quite a you know uh, to watch what they were doing there and they were being impeded by the public you're actually impeding you know the ranchers ability to, to protect animals and livestock you're impeding the ability of our you know being able to get vehicles and that in so um, you know again I saw it as well it was a very challenging we can't move everybody because we have so many other priorities. So I'm asking for the public's cooperation. Um, please stay out of the area. Let us get through uh, this and, uh, and you will let the, the media, of course, keep you advised. And we're keeping you advised with pictures uh, so you know what is happening as, as real time as we can make it. I don't have numbers. Uh, uh, the farmers have been taking uh, livestock uh, stock out. Uh, they were doing it with motor boats that were uh, at about this angle and a cow tied to the back in water that was five feet deep and, and farm hands in the water for hours. When they came out, when I saw them, they were shaking. They were, they were shaking. They are cold. The animals are cold. The cows are cold. They don't know, uh, they don't know what's going on. So. I, I think I saw a few um, cows that were flo seemed to be floating in the water yesterday uh, from the helicopter, but we have no numbers. There's a lot of uh, birds out there too, poultry, um, and I saw barns that were looked like half full of water. I can't imagine that there's any birds left alive, but we don't have those numbers. But it's for those reasons. We don't want people in the water. We have thousands and thousands of cows on Sumas Prairie. There is huge manure storage uh, facilities that are underwater. That, wa that is all mixing into the water. So please uh, help the police fire by not impeding and listening to the instructions. We, we are very much uh, aware of everything that's going on from one corner of that prairie to the other. And uh, we have the information. We are way closer to this than the provinces, which is why we decided not to send that alert out yesterday. And uh, so I think people are, uh, are trusting us that we actually know what we're doing. So please assist us. But, because if, the, if people start going into uh, all sorts of places, we have to go and assist them in some cases because they get into trouble which means that we can't go to somebody's farm who really does need help. So uh, there's probably more than you wanted, but anyways. I have a question. Yes. So probably for Chief Lee. Okay. But you had said yesterday that you're kind of combing through property, but you maybe didn't get to search as thoroughly as possible. How confident are you that there's been no deaths? Or have there been any injuries that you can report for this? So the, um, I guess to your question, the, the one injury that jumps out to me is one of our rescuers the other night was injured. We had a uh, fairly serious arm injury when they're affecting rescues. Um, as far as, you know, when will we be sure? I think we won't be sure until the floodwaters recede, but the, the crews are working systematically. Um, there's basically, uh, the, the emergency operations center supports the site. There's an incident command team on the, the west side of the incident affecting rescues and one on the east. So um, the, the sort of the, the host agency on the west side is Central Fraser Valley Search and Rescue, assisted with Abbey PD and, and Abbotsford Fire. And on the 
east side, it, it's Chilliwack SAR, and they've been basically been at it with either notifications and actual rescues since the start. So, but to to have a um, far as right now, we haven't had anything serious reported to us. But we really won't know until the waters recede. Any guys have been reported to oil? Right now, there's there's a, it's a rescue queue is, I think it's a chief. Do you have that number of how many are in the queue? Yeah, just briefly, there is nobody unaccounted for that we are concerned about that hasn't, you know, reported back to family. So uh, if any family are concerned about a, a missing relatives or anything like that, please contact us and we can certainly follow up. Uh, but uh, we, we have still pro approximately about, you know, 80 in the queue that we're going to still be following up with that uh, with people have called 911 and just are waiting and standing by for assistance. Uh, and we're going to be working through that all morning. Uh, you know, of course, uh, we'll probably be able to be more successful as the, uh, the light, it's later now. But yeah. Yeah, please contact us if you're concerned about any family members. Well, it's like many things. It's been studied to death. Everybody knows what the issue is. We have the same issue on the Fraser River. Uh, we have raised those alarm bells over long before I became the mayor, which was, uh, well, and, and probably going back 40 years. Those dikes need to be protected, and they are not seismically, uh, uh, or the, the seismic requirements require those dikes to be rebuilt. For Abbotsford on our Matsqui dike, which is a different dike, but just to give you some context, is a $400 million bill. We don't have $400 million, so we need help. Uh, we have raised this with uh, the state of Washington um, and asbestos coming down the Sumas River as well for years and years. There's, I'm sure there's very thick files, uh, but we can't tell the Americans what to do. Uh, they need to pr beef up their own dipes to keep the Nooksack water on their side of the border. Uh, this isn't the first time the Nooksack's gone over. Uh, the worst that I have seen in my 68 years here was in 1990. It came over last year, came over this year, but we've never seen this kind of rain. Um, so this was never envisioned or um, designed to take both our local water and the Nooksack River uh, that is a, that's a big river. That has been pouring into Abbotsford uh, for, well, we're going on three days now, I think. So... Well, I want to stay later focused on Abbotsford. Uh, I'm not going to pretend to know what the province has done or hasn't done. Um, I think they have their hands full as well with the fires and now this all over the province. So uh, they will have much more information than I have on it. Uh, but I think we are all levels of government, and I raised this with the Prime Minister yesterday. We need help on those dikes because if this dike goes, we, we have all sorts of other problems. Anyways, uh, we need to go back upstairs, so I appreciate some of you wanted to do individual interviews. We just don't have the time. We need to get up there, and I hope you understand that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Uh, are we? Yes, we will continue to provide updates as they come in, so stay tuned.